There's a time to fight, and there's a time to survive. The first-person shooter had a big year in 2007. Halo 3, Call of Duty 4, Bioshock, and a slew of other games appeared in our local stores, wrecking havoc on our wallets. Sure, it was fun, but it's left us all with a market overload with firearms and explosives, as well as gamers wary of jumping into another roaming conflict. In short, in order to garner some engagement back in the first half of 2008, an FPS needed to have a grip. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Get ready to rock. Two Rock is a reincarnation of the Nintendo 64 favorite that puts you in control of Joseph Two Rock's crossbow and partners you up with the motley members of Whiskey Company. Two Rock was once a member of the Wolf Pack, a violent mercenary group, but fled because taking innocent lives didn't set well with his morality. Joseph Turok wakes aboard a ship heading towards a terraformed biosphere after having a nightmare about a previous mission against a Colombian drug organization. Joseph starts gearing up to come ashore, his new purpose being to catch Roland Kane, Turok's old mentor, who has been largely outcast by his crewmates owing to his previous membership with Wolfpack. However, their craft is gunned down out of orbit, resulting in a devastating collision on the ground putting Turok in some other hallucination about his previous Wolfpack admission. This serves as the basis of the game's initiation, and the rest is left to you to live through. Fighting dinosaurs, as well as huge scorpions, flies, and lizards, is at the center of the story. The planet turns out to be a bizarre experiment where life has been accelerated. However, who is to blame remains uncertain. The story provides that for prospective sequels to solve. If you're a dino fan, you'll find plenty of excitement to appreciate, including lightning-quick raptors, gentle vegesauruses, and, of course, the powerful Tyrannosaurus Rex. Standard weaponry, such as a pulsed rifle, shotgun, missile launcher, and more, is at your service. You can only hold two firearms at a time, although you can dual-wield a lot of them. However, your beloved knife is the finest weapon. Many dramatic battle scenes in the game require you to quickly press a button or jam a trigger to perform a kill maneuver, such as lifting up a relatively small dino and cracking its back over your thigh, leaping atop it, and ramming your blade into its brain, and so on. It's so perfectly done that it's a little scary how thrilling it is to perform knife kills. The mechanics of the game change across console and PC versions, with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions having smoother ragdoll motions, while the ragdoll dynamics on the PC are far stiffer and more genuine in appearance. It's unclear why the different versions vary. The Unreal Engine-powered visuals appear to be good for its standards. However, they aren't quite as clear or precise as in previous Unreal-powered titles. The surfaces, for example, appear to be a little jumbled. Granted, some of the visuals are fantastic, especially when dinosaurs are writhing in agony on the ground. Though the Xbox 360 game struggles with less aliasing, the PlayStation 3 version appears to have better lighting and shade. The two games, nevertheless, are extremely similar. Turok's single-player campaign lasts between 8 and 10 hours. It feels a little longer than other modern shooters, but you'll definitely have a hard time getting through a few segments, which justifies the duration. Then there's the multiplayer aspect. Because there are variants of the conventional deathmatch, team deathmatch, and seize the flag, the multiplayer games can be entertaining. The further utilization of dinosaurs during a battle, on the other hand, adds some spice. These are renegade aspects who will assault anyone, irrespective of whatever side they are on. When a raptor unexpectedly rushes out of a close thicket, you could be in the middle of a frantic knife struggle with some other player. You can perform the third-person viewpoint murder maneuvers if you're quick enough. It's even common to witness someone leaping atop a dinosaur and slitting the creature's throat. There are also a few co-op objectives that allow you to take on a few side quests that aren't available in the single-player game. 
There's co-op compatibility for up to four players, and the combat is much fiercer than in single player, as the number of adversaries and dinosaurs have been significantly increased. And whether you like it or not, when you're struck by a dinosaur or knocked on the ground by a bomb, your feet will fly up in the air. You'll notice that when you get back on your feet, but you're looking a different way than previously. On the one hand, it's a nice benefit to getting damaged, but it's a pain if you're on your last legs and it's now that much more difficult to quickly walk to protection. Turok is undeniably entertaining, but the satisfaction that comes with slicing a raptor's neck or squeezing off a headshot with your arrow is lost in the bigger picture of swarming foes, clean aesthetics, and remarkable storytelling. Do we recommend Turok to anyone who's just seeking a fun game to play with two shotguns? Yes, and you'll have an equally fantastic time doing so. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.